the actinide elements. So here's a quick run through of the members of the actinide series of elements. First up is number 89, that's actinium. This is a non-primordial element. None of the actinium on Earth today was present as actinium when the Earth was formed. The actinium that was in the Earth when it was formed has long since decayed. There are no stable isotopes of actinium, or indeed any other actinide element. In fact, for actinium there are no long-lived isotopes. The most stable isotope of actinium is actinium-227, half-life 22 years. Actinium is in the decay chain of uranium-235, so there are trace amounts of actinium in the uranium oxide ore pitch blend. By trace amounts, I mean there are about 2 milligrams of actinium for every tonne of pitch blend. It's easier to make actinium by neutron irradiation of radium-226 than it is to extract it. Anyway, extracted and isolated it was in 1902 by Grissel. Oh, and the name? Well, that comes from actinos, meaning ray in Greek. 90 is thorium. This is a primordial element. Almost all thorium is thorium-232, which has a half-life of about 10 to the power 10 years, and that is not far off the age of the solar system. Because of this, thorium is only weakly radioactive and is relatively abundant was first identified in 1829 by the legendary Berzelius and named after the Scandinavian god Thor. 91 is protactinium, originally named protoactinium because it is the element that transmutes into actinium when it undergoes alpha decay. Its existence was predictive by Mendeleev and it was identified by Frajans and Goring and its discovery is credited to Hahn and Meitner, although in Scotland, in Glasgow, Cranston, Soddy and Hitchens may have discovered it earlier but did not publish as they were called up for service in World War I. 92 is uranium, like thorium, weakly radioactive. Both uranium-238 and uranium-235 have long half-lives, making uranium the last primordial element. It is quite abundant and was discovered by Martin Henry Klaproth in 1789 and he named it after William Herschel's newly discovered planet Uranus. Its main use today is as a nuclear fuel. 93 is Neptunium, named after the next planet to be discovered, Neptune. This is a synthetic element that was made and discovered by Glenn Seaborg and colleagues during the Second World War in connection with experiments uh, to do with the Manhattan Project and the first nuclear bomb. I have to confess a personal connection here, recently discovered that Seaborg is in my doctoral family tree as my great-great-grandfather. That's my supervisor's supervisor's supervisor. <laughs> Neptunium is made by neutron capture of a uranium atom, which then undergoes a beta decay to give a Neptunium atom. There are some quite long-lived Neptunium isotopes, and Neptunium is the starting point for the next element. 94 is Plutonium, and it is made in the same fashion as Neptunium, a neptunium atom absorbs a neutron, and that isotope decays by beta emission, changing into a plutonium atom. Plutonium is named after Pluto, the next planet. Well, like Ceres and Cerium, it was considered a planet at the time that the element was named. Again discovered by Seaborg and his team, some plutonium isotopes are quite long-lived, others less so. Plutonium-238 is used as a heat source. In thermoelectric power supplies, these are used on landers and rovers and in instruments in space exploration. In this sense, we've sent quite a lot of plutonium to the planet Mars already. 95 is americium, which is under europium in the periodic table. Again, a Seaborg discovery by sequential neutron capture, and this one finds applications much closer to home. Americium-241 is used in most smoke detectors where it provides a stream of charged particles, the current if you like, that is easily reduced by the smoke, in which case the alarm is triggered. 96 is curium, named after Pierre and Marie Curie, who studied radioactivity and discovered radium. Curium was another discovery by Glenn Seaborg, and it again was created by sequential neutron capture and beta emission 
from uranium atoms. In one tonne of spent uranium fuel from a nuclear reactor, there are about 20 grams of curium. Curium is sufficiently radioactive that metallic curium glows purple in the dark. Curium is used as an alpha source in a spectrometer used on a number of exploratory space missions. These include Spirit and Opportunity, Sojourn and, Cur and the Curiosity rovers. 97 is Berkelium, named after Berkeley, home of the University of California's Radiation Laboratory, where Seaborg and Company first identified the element. Its longest lived isotope is Berkelium 247 at 1380 years. However, this isotope is rather difficult to make, so the most synthesized Berkelium is in fact Berkelium 249. 98 is Californium, again discovered by Seaborg in the same University of California lab in Berkeley. Californium 251 has a half life of about 900 years and is the most stable Californium isotope. But Californium 252, with a half-life of 2.6 years, is easier to make, and about half a gram of this isotope of Californium are synthesized each year in the United States. 99 is Einsteinium, obviously after Albert Einstein, first identified in the debris of the early atomic bomb tests such as Ivy Mike. The most stable isotope is Einsteinium 252, with a half-life of just over a year. Einsteinium is the last element that has been produced in quantities that can be observed directly. Einsteinium is a silvery metal that glows blue in the dark because of its intense radioactivity. Fermium is element 100, named after Enrico Fermi. It is the last element that can be made by progressive neutron bombardment. Fermium 257 is the most stable isotope with a half-life of a of 100 days. In a 100 kiloton nuclear explosion, it is estimated that a few milligrams of fermium are produced. Fermium is very difficult to study chemically. 101 is Mendelevium, after the father of the periodic table, Dmitri Mendeleev. Mendelevium can only be produced in a particle accelerator, where, for example, Einsteinium may be bombarded with alpha particles, to produce up to a million Mendelevium atoms in an hour. 258 is the longest lived isotope with a half life of 51 days. 102 is Nobelium, named after Alfred Nobel. The element is made by colliding lighter atoms in a cyclotron particle accelerator. You can make the Nobelium 255 by bombarding a Californium target with a stream of carbon 12 nuclei. 103 is the last element in the actinide series of elements. It is named Lorentzium after Ernest Lawrence, the inventor of the cyclotron. So far, the most stable isotope of Lorentzium is Lorentzium-266, which has a half-life of 11 hours. So those were the actinides. The most stable, thorium and uranium, have major applications in the nuclear industry. The others, up to curium, have some niche applications, but beyond curium, these elements are just too difficult and too inaccessible to be directly used. Okay. Thanks for watching.